first time, they're like, oh, it's not just a problem on a worksheet, it's actually, it's actually something that I can use. And really neat how all of a sudden like everything just became one you know we're reading a history document and then it's like okay use that to draw up this and then you know oh that's that makes sense because we did the electromagnet and then oh my god like all of a sudden the kids are like it was just all so natural we both really understand electricity much more than we would if say we just made an electromagnet start picking up paper clips Originally, we uh, we were talking to UVA and uh, about 3D printing and then using engineering to enhance science curriculum. And uh, we heard about uh, the Smithsonian uh, pushing a 3D initiative, and so uh, we collaborated with UVA to uh, have students create a telegraph. Really, it was sort of an open-ended project, and um, you know the, the telegraph was a natural fit. Um, for some of the stuff that Robbie has been doing in his class, uh, it fit in with the, the science curriculum really, really well, electromagnets. Um, and then with the stuff, then the open-ended things we could do in the engineering classroom, it sort of became this, uh, I don't know, this easy collaboration. And it was like, okay, you do that, I do this, so that boom. And he taught the content at first, and then I started teaching the kids how to do some of the design work. We learned a lot about how the Veil Telegraph was used, like during the Civil War, why they needed relays, so that, like if the electricity were to burn out, the relay would keep the fresh electricity going. It was, it was like, it was nice to not only, um, not only just make it for no reason, but really like learn how it was used. Uh, UVA yeah. contacted the Smithsonian and want to uh, present it to the Smithsonian and so we were actually invited up and uh, the students presented it to the bigwigs up there and uh, they were so impressed with it all that they wanted to continue collaborating with us and seeing how we could actually do this with, uh, with all sorts of other innovations and inventions uh, that are archived in the Smithsonian. So um, this is the key, it sort of, it has its own power source and so when you put this, it sends an uh, electric signal here into this iron core. And then when the electromagnets are turned on, it pulls this down, which completes this uh, secondary circuit, which then turns on this light and makes a very satisfying thing. <laughs> really, my job in the class, in my classroom, is to they teach the science and. Uh, uh, apply the science and do some type of in, uh, minor engineering. Uh, Eric's job is to teach the design and engineering aspect of it and to, through that to enhance the science class. I'm just, I, I learn better when I'm experiencing it in front of me. I, like reading and taking notes from a textbook, it, it doesn't help. Um, it's just easier to understand something if it's right in front of you and you can do different things to it or whatever it is and like you can just see the reactions of it. It's, it's just it's simpler. You can make relations. It's easy. Absolutely. They're, they're learning and um, you know if, if, if uh, our, our concern should not be can, an, uh, can a kid accurately answer A, B, C, or D I mean, it should be like how, what skills are they going to be able to really apply and use in life? And I don't see test taking as the number one skill I want my kids to walk away with. I want them to be critical thinkers, problem solvers, and be able to apply knowledge. If you can't apply knowledge, it's, it's not very helpful. And I, I think that's what schools need to become, is a, 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 a factory of individual critical thinkers.